हु वॉज द फाउंडर ऑफ चारवाग स्कूल सो बृहस्पति वॉज द फाउंडर ऑफ चारवाग स्कूल एंड वट वॉज द सोर्स दैट इज today we will discuss first topic of philosophy optional paper 1 philosophy optional paper 1 and first topic of indian philosophy as well indian philosophy as well so in indian philosophy usually all the philosophers were talking about purusharth purusharth almost all the indian schools of philosophy like sankhya yog nyay vaisheshik they all were concerned about getting liberation or nirvana getting liberation or nirvana why because because they were believing in purusharth purusharth means dharma arth dharma arth kaam and moksha so their ultimate aim or the ultimate aim of their philosophy was moksha so everyone was talking about liberation or moksha now liberation or moksha of whom liberation of whom who is here man is here okay man is here or a human being is here so who will get liberation man is made up of two things one is material thing another one is non material thing and that non material thing is recognized in indian philosophy that non material thing is consciousness and that non material thing is recognized as soul or atma in indian philosophy everyone is saying that this soul or atma is eternal in nature it is permanent in nature it is permanent in nature it will survive after death of human body on the other hand everyone is saying that this there are five types of material five types of material which are also known as panch mahabhut panch mahabhut that is earth air water fire and ether okay so human body is made up of panch mahabhut panch mahabhut so after the death of any human being these material thing will not survive these panch mahabhut will not survive and all of the indian schools of philosophy are saying that that non material thing that conscious that consciousness soul or atma which is eternal in nature which is permanent in nature which is which survive after the death of a human body okay so everyone was saying this but charvak okay charvak was a radical philosopher who came and destroyed all these concept or we can say reject all these concepts and bring novel idea in indian philosophy novel idea in indian philosophy that is why we can consider charvak 
as a rebel a rebel school among all the uh, schools of indian philosophy okay we will be discussing each and every aspect where charvak will be rejecting earlier established theory so charvak is also known as lokayat is one of the most influential materialistic philosopher why materialistic because earlier indian all the indian schools were focusing more on spiritualism okay spiritualism but charvak will be focusing on material aspect spiritualism why because we have discussed that uh, the main focus of earlier philosophers were liberation or moksha but charvak will say no liberation cannot be your ultimate aim okay so charvak school is known as lokayat school and it is materialistic school a skeptical philosophical school of ancient india it challenged the religious and metaphysical belief now we will discuss what is metaphysics of charvak and what is epistemology of charvak okay then uh, beliefs of traditional hinduism advocating a rational empirical approach to the understanding of the world students in western philosophy there is a clear differentiation in rational philosophy and or rationalists and empiricists empiricists okay but in indian philosophy there is no such differentiation or no such trends like uh, these are rationalist and these are empiricist but charvak was a rational empirical philosopher okay moving ahead with this discussion we will disc- uh, we will discuss some uh, factual aspect regarding charvak such as charvak is one of the nastik school or heterodox school of indian philosophy okay what is nastik school and what is heterodox school okay indian philosophy basically indian philosophy can be divided into two types one is nastik school and one is astik school here the term nastik and astik do not uh, signify that uh, atheism okay or atheist school here uh, or those who believe in god or not here nastik school means those schools those schools who reject the authority of veda reject the authority of vedas authority of vedas such schools are known as nastik school and astik who accept the authority of veda accept the authority of vedas like nyay school vishesha school uh, sankhi school yog school mimamsa all these schools of indian philosophy are astik and charvak along with jainism and buddhism are nastik school so char uh, at the same time these are heterodox school and they are cons- astik schools are also known as orthodox school orthodox school believes in authority of vedas but a uh, heterodox school as well as nastik school reject the authority of veda okay moving ahead with this uh, who was the founder of charvak school so vrahaspati was the founder of charvak school and what was the source that is vrahaspati sutra but uh, those sources okay those sources are lost time period is considered as 5th to 6th century bce okay in the history uh, you might have learned about uh, emergence of heterodox school in magadh region okay during the age of buddha uh, around 64 heterodox schools were there in india uh, and those schools challenged uh, brahmanical supremacy or vedic ritual during that time so Uh, the same charvak school was born out in that uh, 
in that similar phase so it is a materialistic school existed before charvak it was only the school which systemized materialistic philosophy so these are some uh, factual aspect now we will be discussing uh, three thing okay three thing about charvak's philosophy so first thing okay uh, these are basically the three branches of philosophy three branches of philosophy first epistemology second metaphysics and third one is ethics epistemology means theory of knowledge theory of knowledge theory of knowledge means how we can know the reality and what are the limits of our knowledge okay which type of knowledge we can get about the reality and what will be limitations of our knowledge second one is metaphysics metaphysics means theory of reality theory of reality okay theory of reality means what will be the nature of reality like what will be the nature of god okay because we are considering god as the reality so what will be the nature of god and in epistemology we will learn theory of knowledge means how we can know something about god and what will be limitations on that knowledge and the third point will be the ethics so basically these three uh, these three are the branches of philosophy and in charvak we will discuss these three aspects okay so uh, in earlier philosophies like uh, we can say nyay school okay so nyay uh, न्याय एपिस्टोमोलॉजी कंसीडर्स फोर टाइप्स ऑफ प्रमाण फोर टाइप्स ऑफ प्रमाण प्रमाण मीन्स नॉलेज ओके और थ्योरी ऑफ नॉलेज विच मीन्स वी कैन गेट नॉलेज वाया प्रत्यक्ष वी कैन गेट नॉलेज वाया प्रत्यक्ष प्रत्यक्ष मीन्स डायरेक्ट परसेप्शन डायरेक्ट परसेप्शन perception means what we are witnessing right now like i am witnessing this board which means this is my perception this is pratyaksh okay so pratyaksh uh, is nothing but our uh, sensory organs are connected with the outside organ okay that will lead to the pratyaksh or perception so nyay school accepted pratyaksh as one of the praman second one is anuman anuman means inference okay inference okay we will be discussing inference in detail okay in this lecture itself so nyay accepted pratyaksh anuman and shabd okay shabd that is verbal testimony and upaman okay so charvak will reject all these all these theory of praman and charvak will say that pratyaksha is the only praman means what i am observing or what i am seeing right now is the only reality this is the only theory which i will be going to accept otherwise i will be rejecting other pramans like anuman that is inference shabda upaman everything will be rejected by charva except one that is pratyaksh pratyaksh means perception direct he only accepted direct perception as the is the uh, way to know the reality okay second one is metaphysics okay so his metaphysics is ultimately the outcome of his epistemology because if perception is the only praman okay i cannot see god okay it is not possible for these two eyes to see the god or it is not possible for these two eyes to see the soul as well or any supernatural entity okay uh, at the same time via our sensory organ okay we are having five sensory organ so by using those five sensory organs we cannot 
वी कैन नॉट नो एनी थिंग अबाउट वी कैन नॉट नो एनी थिंग अबाउट सुपर नेचुरल रियालिटी ओके सुपर नेचुरल रियालिटी सो वॉट एवर वट एवर आर कमिंग इन अवर परसेप्शन दैट विल बी एक्सेप्टेड एज ए थ्योरी ऑफ नॉलेज बाय होम बाय चारवाक देन मेटाफिजिक्स इज देयर so it is natural outcome of his metaphysics if pratyaksha is the only pramana then matter is the only reality because what we can perceive we can perceive only matter okay material thing so matter will be the only reality and that will lead to the establishment of materialism that will lead to the establishment of materialism of charva okay so he he uphold the reality of material thing why because material things can be perceived they can be touched like i am touching this pen right now okay so they can be touched they can be feel okay they can be felt they can be <coughs> perceived four perceivable elements are what earth air water and fire here charvak rejected the existence of ether in hindi it is also known as akash why because we cannot perceive akash or we cannot feel the akash okay so he accepted only four perceivable perceivable element that is known as bhut chatushta okay earlier we are saying that these are panch mahabhut but bhut chatushta because charvak rejected ether as well okay why because he is accepting perception is the only praman and we can not perceive akash so his theory will be pluralistic why because he is accepting four fundamental element okay if he uh, if he uh, might have accepted only one fundamental element then we can uh, say that uh, charvak is a uh, charvak is known uh, not a pluralistic rather Charvak is trying to establish monism here. Why? Because he is considering only one fundamental element, but he is considering four fundamental element. That is why pluralism. And why material element or why materialistic philosophy? Because these four fundamental elements are material in nature. So in this manner, pratyaksha is the only praman. which will definitely leads to matter is the only reality and there were four fundamental matters and because of those four fundamental matter uh, his philosophy will be pluralistic in nature and materialistic in nature and these two concepts epistemology and metaphysics will lead to the charvak's ethics okay because according to charvak pratyaksha is the only praman matter is the only reality there is no soul there is no god there is no law of karma there is no causation then it is okay it is a complete waste of time to seek the liberation of soul okay because who knows that that uh, particular soul will be eternal in nature he rejected it okay so he is saying that this is the life and that life will ends okay when these four material dissociate with each other okay so jab tak life hai tab tak enjoy karo that is why charvak's ethics is also known as hedonism okay hedonism why because charvak rejected the need for ethics morals and suggested that while life remains let a man live happily let him feed on the ghee even through he runs in death okay matlab jab tak jeena hai aap badhiya ghee kha kar ke jiyo chahe aapko udhar lena pad jaye okay so these are the three aspects of charvak's philosophy okay so we will discuss first aspect that is epistemology epistemology of charvak we have already discussed that perception is the only valid source of knowledge perception okay perception is the only source of valid knowledge okay that 
logically leads to empiricism. Empiricism, Chaivak believed that perception is the only valid source of knowledge. Empiricism means we are accepting the empirical reality. Empiric empirical reality means what we are perceiving right now. Like we are perceiving right now this board. We are perceiving right now this PPT. We are perce perceiving right now this pen. You are perceiving right now me. So I am the reality because I exist in the empirical world. Okay. Then second is skepticism. Okay, uh, some uh, philosopher can say that Chaivak is a, uh, a skeptic philosopher, but Chaivak was not a uh, skeptic philosopher. Why? Because Chaivak cannot be considered as an is skeptic philosopher because he is saying that Pratyaksha is the only Praman, which means he is accepting Pratyaksha. Uh, on the other hand, skeptics are the philosopher who believes that certain knowledge is not certain knowledge is not possible at all but Chaivak is saying certain knowledge can be possible via perception or via Pratyaksha only he is saying that uh, what we are perceiving right now is a certain thing what we are getting from perception is a certain knowledge so Chaivak is not a skeptic philosopher but he is a empiricist he is a materialistic philosopher he is a pluralist as well okay he rejected inference actually he rejected everything but his main target was inference inference means anuman inference means anuman okay and it is one of the most important source of knowledge according to nyay vaisheshik school okay so Chaivak thinker rejected the use of inference and logical reasoning, a reliable means of acquiring knowledge, focusing solely on the direct sensory experience. Okay, so we will be discussing how he rejected inference. Okay, now uh, be before doing that, we will discuss what is inference. Inference is a knowledge of unperceived and unknown things. Okay like uh, there is a hill and smoke is rising from that hill okay this is smoke which is also known as Hetu and this hill is also known as Paksh in Nyaya philosophy so unperceived and unknown thing by perceived and known thing and its validity depends upon Vyapti okay it is quite tough I will explain it okay this is the perceived thing okay I uh, this is a typing mistake uh, knowledge of unperceived and unknown thing okay so knowledge of fire we are witnessing what we are witnessing hill and smoke over the hills okay but we are not witnessing or perceiving fire there we are just perceiving smoke there okay now there is one condition that uh, condition is universal in nature okay according to Nyaya school according to Nyaya school that condition is what where there is a smoke there is a fire okay so this condition is known as vyapti now this condition is in our mind okay now imagine a situation that you are witnessing a hill and smoke there and this unconditional relation is already present in your mind that where there is a smoke there will be a fire so by perceiving that smoke over the hill you will say that you will say that there is a fire on the hill there is a fire on the hill and this knowledge because we are saying that uh, there is a fire in the hill but we are not observing fire there okay 
सो दैट इज वाई इन्फ्लुएंस इज द नॉलेज ऑफ अनपर्सीव्ड एंड अनोन थिंग बिकॉज फायर इज ओके फायर इज अनपर्सीव एंड अनोन एंड वॉट वी आर विटनेसिंग और वॉट वी आर परसीविंग परसीव्ड एंड नोन थिंग देयर इज वॉट परसीव एंड नोन थिंग देयर इज स्मोक getting my point so it is the knowledge of unperceived and unknown thing that is fire by perceived and known thing that is smoke and its validity depends upon the vyapti that is the logical ground that is uh, you can say it is a concept which is uh, relating smoke with the fire okay now charvak will say Chavak will say vyapti cannot be established. Inference is nothing but inference is nothing but uh, leap in the dark. Okay, it is merely a guesswork. It is merely a guesswork. Okay, why? Because vyapti cannot be established. How vyapti cannot be established? because charvak says that inference can be treated as praman only if one can establish the vyapti beyond a doubt however such vyapti cannot be established through these means means uh, vyapti cannot be established according to charvak okay uh, suppose charvak is saying that uh, what if those uh, those wood in those hills are red and because of that smoke is rising there okay and fire is not there this can be a condition okay and in this condition there is a smoke there is a fire this vyapti this particular vyapti cannot be established okay so Uh, Charvak says that uh, via perception you cannot establish vyapti. Why? Because once you uh, witness fire and smoke together, okay, then second time you see the same relationship, or maybe third time you see the same relationship and you said that where there is a fire, there is a smoke, okay. so you are generalizing something okay by observing only two to three or you can say four instances you are saying that it is it is the relation beyond doubt it is a universal relation how can you say that it is nothing but a fall, fallacy of illicit generalization you are generalizing something okay it is not necessary that where there is a fire there is a smoke that is why that is why vyapti cannot be established via perception because our perception is limited to the particular cases only okay so vyapti cannot be established via perception first thing second inference okay you are establishing vyapti and after that you are establishing inference and now you are saying that vyapti can be established by inference so it leads to circular fallacy that on the basis of vyapti you are establishing inference and now via basis of inference you are establishing vyapti so it will lead to circular fallacy or fallacy of petito precipi or fallacy of infinite regression okay so via inference it cannot be established via verbal testimony now verbal testimony means he was basically uh, referring to vedas okay or we can say other uh, authoritative text now he is saying that uh, in verbal testimony one has to accept the word of a reliable person okay or a scripture as a source of valid knowledge which means you are establishing vyapti that uh, where there is a reliable person there will be a authoritative text or he will be a reliable because 
This will be the source of your knowledge. Now it essentially involves inference. Then again, it will lead to circular fallacy. So basically, he is saying that uh, it cannot be established via perception. It cannot be via established via inference. It cannot be established either via verbal testimony because if you are considering that a uh, reliable person is there or authoritative text is there, so this consideration itself uh, is nothing but inference or via inference you are establishing vyapti again. So it will again lead to fallacy of uh, fallacy of petitio precipi. Okay, and the last one is causation, cause effect relation like hill, uh, sorry, fire is causing smoke. Okay, so is another kind of vyapti. Why? Because this uh, cause effect relation is nothing but okay. So basically, it will again lead to circular fallacy, or we can say as the two events are found together, numerous occasion, the mind gets trained to believe that they will, uh, they will always go together, and it is necessary relation. But Hume, Hume, uh, Western thinker Hume, also said that. Causal necessity is not a logical necessity, but it is a psychological necessity. So whatever you are considering that, that Vyapti is a logical ground of inference, you are incorrect. Vyapti is nothing but a psychological necessity. It is not a logical necessity. It is the habit of your mind that you are uh, expecting another thing by just witnessing a particular thing. Why? Because earlier you have witnessed the same thing. So basically he rejected the logical ground of inference that is Vyapti. So via rejecting Vyapti, he rejected inference. He rejected inference. He said that Vyapti cannot be established either via perception or Pratyaksh because it will lead to illicit generalization it cannot be established via inference or anuman because it will lead to circular fallacy it cannot be established via shabda because it will again lead to circular fallacy and it cannot be established via cause effect relationship because cause effect relationship is nothing but a certain type of vyapti on the other hand uh, we can compare this notion of Charvak with the Western thinker Hume, okay? And Hume also said that it is a psychological necessity, it is not a logical necessity. So Vyapti cannot be established. In this manner, he rejected inference thoroughly, okay? If he rejected inference thoroughly, so it automatically leads to the rejection of Upaman and other. Uh, means of praman or we can say other theory of knowledges okay now it is time to criticize charvak okay now we will criticize charvak okay the first criticism is refusing to accept the inference is nothing but a refusal to think okay because while uh, considering a particular relation uh, we uh, used to think Okay, we used to reason over something. So refusing to accept inference is nothing but refusing to think. Okay, refusal to think. So basically, you are refusing to think. And without thinking, no progress can be made yet. No progress can be made. Okay, no scientific theory can be propounded without using inference. Second, if you don't accept inference as a praman, our practical life would become difficult. Our practical life would become difficult. Okay? If you are not uh, accepting that, why? Because via witnessing uh, dark clouds, example, via witnessing dark clouds, we used to run, we used to run towards our home yes or no but Charvak is saying that we are not witnessing okay thunderstorm here we are not witnessing thunderstorm here 
we are just witnessing dark clouds and it is not necessary that these dark clouds will leads to thunderstorm so it is not need to run okay because charvak rejected vyapti while uh, 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 we considers that where there are dark clouds there will be thunderstorm and we often prepare okay for the shelters or we starts running towards our home so our life would become difficult if perception is the only source of knowledge or valid knowledge is also nothing but illicit generalization okay this is the condition okay where charvak charvak is generalizing perception he is saying that perception is the only source of valid knowledge which means you are establishing okay something uh, something beyond your perception something beyond your perception and going something beyond your perception is nothing but inference so basically you are using inference to reject inference and this is nothing but circular fallacy okay this is nothing but illicit generalization so earlier you were criticizing nyay school for illicit generalization now you are okay doing the same thing now charvak's refutation of anuman itself is the process of anuman because charvak is using inference to reject the inference and even perception can also go wrong or illusion or hallucination okay if your mental state is not good then you can have illusion or hallucination or we can say that in the dark in the dark we can perceive a rope as a snake we can perceive a rope as a snake so sometimes our perception can also be go wrong okay so Ch- when charvak is saying that perception is the only source of valid knowledge it is not correct because in the dark we are uh, perceiving rope as a snake and that is a wrong perception okay so moving ahead with this we will reach to the metaphysics of char charvak okay his epistemology is perception is the perception in hindi or in sanskrit it is pratyaksh pratyaksh is the only praman pratyaksh is the only praman so material is the only reality so that is why his epistemology logically leads to materialism and rejection of the transcendental entities transcendental entities what are the transcendental entities soul that is atma in indian philosophy god that is paramatma in indian philosophy okay or we can say liberation beyond our perception or we can say ether that is akash that is also beyond our perception so first point about his metaphysics is materialism because materialistic he embraced materialistic world view and deny the existence of soul after life and supernatural realm then second point as charvak treats perception as the only praman then it will logically leads to the reality of matter only and he accepted we have already discussed with these points like reality of four elements earth air water fire okay prathvi vayu jal and agni but he rejected akash and these four fundamental elements are known as bhut chatushtay bhut chatushtay so charvak accepted the reality of empirical world because these four things are empirical in nature that is why he accepted the reality of empirical world and rejected all kinds of entities which can not be perceived through sense object contact sense object contact okay moving ahead with this some other uh, rejection like first he rejected god 
in indian philosophy god is considered as creator sustainer destroyer governor of moral laws like what is good and what is bad but charvak rejected that notion okay usually god is accepted as creator sustainer moral governor but charvak rejected why because it is a supernatural entity and it, it cannot be pursued okay so charvak is consistent in what he was saying and that is why he rejected the notion of god there is no need to accept a god as the efficient cause of the world no need to accept why because these four elements what are those four elements earth air water and fire these four elements have natural tendency okay have natural tendency or are governed by natural force or governed by their natural force or their own nature we can say their own nature their own nature nature means swabhav their swabhav they have a tendency to get integrated and because of that integration or because of that association a thing or things of the world are come out so whenever these four elements get together and associated which will lead to a worldly thing okay have a inherent tendency to combine have a inherent tendency to get associated with each other and that association will leads to what creation of the world creation of a worldly thing and because it is because of their own nature it is because of their swabhav this creation this particular type of creation is known as swabhavvad or naturalism getting my point so on the one hand he rejected the notion of god as a creator sustainer destroyer on the other hand he said that these four elements are having their own nature and they are having a tendency to combine they have a tendency to associate and because of that association creation happened okay or that uh, uh, creation of a worldly thing and that is known as swabhavavad earlier in indian philosophy we say uh, we learned that teleology is there teleology means purpose is there for behind any creation there is a purpose like god has created something okay god if god has created something which means it will be having some purpose it will be having some purpose but according to charvak there is no god first thing second thing it is because of their own nature a particular worldly thing has been created so it is a swabhavvad and now another thing he said that there is no teleology there is no purpose in this worldly creation okay don't go beyond that particular thing and try to find out anything which is beyond your perception there is no such teleology there is no such purpose why because uh, there is no conscious purpose behind this creation because it is merely a mechanical phenomena and that too accidental as well okay so all the world around you accidentally created because of the association of these four bhuta chatushtay and that is why this creation is known as yadrachvad okay accidentalism this creation is mechanical in nature this creation is uh, happening because of the internal nature that is swabhavavad and mechanical nature accidental in nature that is yadrachvad so these two new theories were propounded by charvak secondly he rejected soul we have already discussed that earlier soul is considered as an eternal entity or permanent entity and uh, we used to believe that that soul will survive after death but charvak said that this particular soul will not survive 
Why? Because we cannot perceive that soul. Okay? There is no such soul there. Then we say that, Charvak, we are conscious. Okay? So from where this consciousness is coming? So Charvak will say, look, you have uh, differentiated material thing and conscious thing. Material thing and conscious thing. Okay? You have uh, ascribed material property to earth, water, fire and air. And you have ascribed that conscious property to the soul. So soul is nothing but your imagination. Okay? You have created soul by your mind. I am saying that soul is not there and consciousness is the property of this material thing only okay this is the new concept Charvak said that this consciousness whatever you are talking about this consciousness is nothing but the property of these four material four fundamental material okay and consciousness is coming out of that uh, swabhavavat of that swabhava, that creation. After that creation, its uh, output is its output is worldly object. We have already discussed. But in this creation, if this earth, air, water, and uh, fire, if they are combined in a certain proportion then consciousness is also an another outcome. So he is not considering consciousness as the property of soul. He is considering consciousness is a byproduct. Okay? Uh, primary product are worldly objects. And byproduct is consciousness because uh, in the creation, in the Swabhavat, these four elements are there. But Everything, uh, every object in the world is not conscious, but if they are combined in a certain proportion, then consciousness is also, okay, coming out of that creation. So soul is accepted as eternal permanent entity in most of the philosophical school. Chaivak rejected the existence of that soul. It is merely a byproduct matter, okay, but that consciousness, he rejected the soul and he said that the uh, property of that soul is nothing but a bribe byproduct and it is not the property of soul it is the property of these four fundamental elements and that is why because these are known as bhuta chatushtai and those bhuta chatushtai are conscious conscious means chetanya conscious means chetanya so that is why bhuta chetanya vad Chaitanyavad. He said that, uh, he equated that, uh, suppose you are having a beetle and katha or katechu, okay, and lime or chuna, jaysay hum paan khate hain, chuna, and if you combined together and you chew, okay, that mixture, then what is the outcome? Outcome is redness, okay. Redness was not there in beetle or in katha or in chuna, but redness is the outcome in the same manner earth, water, fire and air. If they combined in a particular proportion or a certain proportion, then consciousness is the outcome. So this theory is known as Bhuta Chetanyavad. And because consciousness is the property of these four fundamental elements, that is why it is also known as Dehatmavad. Chaivak says that body is identical with the soul. It is nothing different from the soul. Okay? So these are some radical concepts give, uh, given by Chaivak. Now he gave some arguments in favor of De Dehatmavad that is so, uh, soul or uh, consciousness is nothing but the identical to the body that as long as we are alive consciousness is present in it. Yeah, true. Consciousness is present since our birth and it will present till our death. If body is healthy, so consciousness 
and vice versa means if our body is healthy then consciousness is more then if our body is sick or we are suffering from any disease then it will leads to decrease our consciousness so and next he gave the same example that we have discussed beetle areca nut and lime together acquires a reddish color in the same way association of bhut chatushta leads to the emergence of consciousness and dissociation of those four elements leads to loss of consciousness okay if they are in association consciousness will be there not in association in a certain proportion if they are in a certain proportion and then association consciousness will be there and if that association disturbs then consciousness will go away okay these are the arguments and uh, finally we reach to the final part that is the ethics of charvak so charvak said that yavat jivet sukham jivet vrnam kritva ghritam pibe jab tak jiyo tab tak sukhi jeevan jiyo chahe uske liye vrn vrnam kritva means chahe uske liye udhar hi kyon na lena pade lekin aap badhiya ghee piyo and bhasmi bhutasya dehasya punaragaman kutah jab tak ye sharir hai tab tak hi sab kuch hai aur wapas aane ka kisne dekha hai theek hai so it will uh, that final court will leads to the ethics of charvak that is pursuit of pleasure and rejection of ascetism okay like propagated by the buddhism and jainism buddhism and jainism but charvak propagated opposite of that charvak said that okay no i am not considering soul okay i am not considering god in fact i am not considering after life and i do not believe in liberation so liberation cannot be your highest aim okay these four dharma arth kama and moksha so moksha cannot be your highest aim your aim should be arth and kama so focus on these two aspects rather than focusing on liberation okay and it will lead to the uh ethics of hedonism that is charvak's philosophy promoted the pursuit of pleasure and enjoyment of material goods as the ultimate goal of human existence your goal should not be liberation okay liberation aapne dekha hi nahi hai to uske bare mein baat hi kyon karni hai rejection of ascetism that is charvak criticized the hindu practice of ascetism uh and self denial arguing that it was a waste of human potential pragmatic philosopher to maximize happiness and minimize the sufferings of life and secularism is not uh, necessary to discuss okay so this is all about charvak ultimately a uh, critic of vedas and upanishad he rejected the authority of veda okay he uh, criticized all the unnecessary rituals or meaningful superstitions okay and skepticistic metaphysics he established and his influence on indian thought and philosophy is establishment of rationalism materialism secularism and hedonism okay so that philosophy was propounded by charvak in 5th to 6th century okay materialistic philosophy in fact uh, we can say that if uh, charvak was successful or charvak's philosophy was uh, uh, if charvak's philosophy would have become more popular than uh, veneso that veneso that witnessed by europe in 14th to uh, 17th century we would have been witnessing the same veneso in india in 65th to 6th century because of his uh, emphasis on materialism uh, rationalism empiricism okay hedonism getting my point he challenged all the uh, superstitions all the earlier notion and philosophies uh, presented during that time so that's all for charvak we will be di- uh, discussing something more interesting in the next class thank you